return to our regularly scheduled program. Please stand by for further details. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. All right. Uh, hello and welcome to episode number 13 of Tyler Lynch on standby. Uh, quick update, still on standby. Yep. Although, things are looking good. That's all we can say. Things are looking good. They're looking up. They're looking up. Okay. Uh, and uh, on the Chad Kroger front, things are looking down. Yeah. Uh, still no word from Chad Kroger on whether or not he'll join us here. Uh, uh, presumably still hates us. There's really not much of an update to that situation. Stocks are low with Chad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, that being said, next episode, I don't want to say who because you never know. Things could fall through, but it looks like uh, on Wednesday's episode, there'll be a pretty exciting guest. That's yep. fun. We'll get that coming up. Uh, big thank you to everybody who's been emailing TylerLynch at gmail.com. Big thank you to 604. Uh, big thank you to the Comedy Here Often Podcast Network. And uh, big thank you to producer Lexi for being here once again. <laughs> That's the start of the episode. Nail. I feel like that's the best start of the episode. It I've is. It's so far. very It felt good. pretty clean. It felt good. I got right through it. Um, we have an email from Brett to Tyler and Lynch at gmail.com. Okay. I just wanted to read out. Thank you, Brett, for sending this in. It says, it's not typed well. Okay. And uh, Brett doesn't seem like a big computer person, but okay. that's fine. That's fine. Uh, it says, finally found you on the interwebs. And thanks for the YouTube show. You didn't type out full Y-O-U, just YouTube. Okay. YouTube show. Tyler is made for it. Lynch doesn't have the makeup wardrobe, so maybe radio is better? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the makeup or wardrobe. Used to always side with Lynch, but YouTube is making me rethink it. LOL. Hope the best for you or more viewers on the YouTube so you can do what you want. Thank you, Brett. Uh, I like how there's like compliments in there and also like... Uh, backhanded, backhanded slaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, I hope you have more viewers so you could do what you want, implying that we don't have enough right now, which is probably accurate. Probably accurate. Thanks, Brett, for highlighting that. Uh, he clearly missed the episode where we talked about I'm starting a barbecue channel on YouTube, and once that's up and rolling, we'll be famous in no time. Okay, Big Brett? So that's Brett. And as much as I like that Brett is making fun of your fashion yeah, and making fun of you in general and reconsidering... Uh, coming over to Team Tyler instead of Team Lynch. Stay on Team Lynch. I have to compliment your fashion throughout this podcast. Brett, if you think this is bad, okay, <laughs> you should see what he used to wear when nobody could see him. You've put in a conscious effort to dress nice each day. There was like two episodes in a row where you wore a hat. And I was like, oh, God damn it. He's giving up. Like, like the, hat hat, time. the hat time is like the first sign of giving up. And I was like, it's going to get worse from here. But then you surprised me. I you showed up without a hat. Oh. Got a haircut, thanks to Juan. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you got this new jacket that you've worn the last three episodes in a row, um, which is fine, but it look, it's a nice jacket. Just I feel like you I could change. Could, like, you don't have to wear the same thing. Fly a plane with this thing yeah. on. <laughs> You do look Top Gun-esque. I know. I like it. <laughs> no, but you look good. And uh, so, yeah, Brett's right. Like, you could always do better. I but could. you've done better than what you used to do before. I used to have the conversation, Alexi, <laughs> you're into fashion. Yeah. About how, like, you're, Lynch is a grown adult and he would wear flip-flops to work. What? And I was like, stop being a grown adult who <laughs> wears flip-flops flip -flop? to work. <laughs> to work? Why not? the beach vacation. You know, just like summertime with friends in a backyard. Sure, whatever. To work? I have not nice feet. No one... No one in a professional setting should ever see your toes. That's that should be a rule. Like, it, I don't have the weird toes like you. You've got like weird gangly toes where like some of them are way longer than one another. Yeah, and they're pretty hairy. Let's take off the shoes. Let's show them off. Uh, I don't think we well, should show people Well, you know what? We're trying to get more feet. viewers, and maybe foot fetish is the way to go. Uh, <laughs> oh, my shoe is too tight. Ugh. Big see, it's because those feet. weird ass toes you got going on there. <laughs> see, like, look at, oh, God, no. Nobody needs to see that, I need Tyler. to trim my toenails. True story. One time I let my toenails grow so long, I ripped a hole in my bed sheets moving. Oh, like, my like God. I would move in the middle of the night, and the toenails were so sharp, they'd <laughs> right through the bed sheet. So. It's like an exacto knife. Yeah. So foot fetish stuff. Like oh. even their toenails right now, look how long those things are, man. Yeah, but they're <laughs> well paint clean. <laughs> They're longer than mine. Yeah, I haven't showered in a couple gross. days. So that's a good start to the episode. Brett, I hope seeing my feet uh, really won you over to Team Tyler. There's always room at Team Lynch's table. Come on, oh, Brett. Just stay will Lynch there. show you his feet on camera? No, I don't think he will. Lynch wouldn't do that for you. That's that's something that's disgusting. Someone is dedicated. I have nice feet. As myself would do. You have nice That's, feet. I do. Okay, let's see. All right. <laughs> let's compare feet. You saw mine. Who has the better feet? Leave a comment 
or email Tyler and Lynch at gmail.com. Let us know what's I mean, better for you. Those aren't weird like yours are. How can anyone see that? Put it on the camera. Oh, look, no flexibility. <laughs> no, I don't have flexibility. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got <laughs> hair sticking to my feet now. Because of the other podcasters in here. Yeah, who are gross. gross ass hair. Podcasters, comedians. It's disgusting. God. Well, that's a good start. This is a good start. Yeah, for all the foot fetishes. I got to say, you, you actually do have PayPal. really nice feet. I'm on Team Lynch feet. Like, if I had to pick a pair of feet out of these feet that I would I would fornicate with, it would be Lynch's feet. <laughs> you fornicate with? Yeah, that's what okay, that's foot the weirdest fetish is. shit ever, man. That's, that's far from the weirdest fetish ever. Foot I, stuff? I, I think foot stuff is weird. I just don't, I don't get it personally, but I know there's a big market for it. Yeah. You, yeah, know? yeah, yeah. you can make so much money on the internet, like selling your socks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, it's, I think it's like, there's more people than you think that are into it, which is surprising. Cause I don't think I've ever met anybody, but yeah. maybe who knows? You definitely have. You just didn't know because it's, it's like, I forget what the numbers are, but like, it's pretty popular. Like the foot fetish thing. And on like the scale of like weird fetishes. I mean, there's people that have sex with balloons. Yeah, there's okay. people that want to get shit on. So Yeah, that's true. If yeah. Feet okay. your thing, I'm not judging you. That's all that's I'm saying. That's middle of the road then? And I'll give you pictures of mine. Uh, <laughs> but honestly, take lynches. They're more fun. Hey, more, more fun feet. <laughs> <laughs> if everything so we gross. mentioned off the top that is looking promising career-wise for us doesn't go through, then... Um, we'll start a website. Yeah. Lynch's yeah. only fans for feet. Um... <laughs> Petty fest. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if you want to be Team Lynch right now, though, because we were discussing in the last episode, Elon Musk was on SNL, and it's happened, and it was not good for Dogecoin. Lynch is poor again. Well, uh, yeah, but, 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 for some reason, Elon Musk on SNL mentioned Dogecoin, which you would think would increase the price of it, but it actually plummeted. So Lynch lost a bunch of money over the weekend. Oh, no. uh, the price of Dogecoin was around 70 cents. Before Musk started hosting the show, this is according to the Independent. So this is all American uh, funds. You yeah, yeah. And then, but after the mention he gave it on SNL, it dropped by as much as twenty four percent to forty nine cents. Yeah, and then bounced back to fifty four. So you're down like twenty cents. Well, per coin, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you're so, down like. But it went up again this morning. Bucks? Though that's the thing. It spiked sure again. Sure, it did. Sure, it did. So you're down like five hundred bucks though. Uh, Just be honest. About Dave. that. Yeah, about that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're losing money again. It, it <sighs> dropped to 43 cents. It was at a high of 87 cents right before SNL started. And as soon as it started, it dropped. Which is so weird. You would think that him mentioning it on there would be good for well, it. Well, I went and did some research on this. And supposedly somebody who owned a ton of Dogecoin sold off. Uh, like as soon as like it started up, he sold or whomever it was, sold their Dogecoin and it dropped. To like it was like forty three cents at one point. Were you freaking out a little bit? A little bit. Now last but then episode, again, I, I invested when it was four cents, so I'm making money. Yeah, but last episode you were like, I'm not pulling it out. Like it's Dogecoin to the moon. Like have you changed your tune at all now? No. Like you still you still should got have pulled it in out there. last episode when we told you to pull out, and you wouldn't have lost any money. Well, technically, you just, I haven't lost. I've got I, all my money that I invested in it. For someone who gambles as much as you do, you're bad at it. You really don't win. Am I ever. bad at it? I'm still up. In fact, I'm up even more today it's because- It's such a gambling addict thing to not address the fact that you just lost $500. It's fluctuating. Yeah. That's what it's doing. Okay. And speaking of gambling, okay. I'd like to say that I uh, won some money today as well in my hockey pool. Oh. So Sports betting. First overall. It's not sports betting when you win. It's not gambling. I'm winning. So, you know, invest that money back into- Dogecoin. We were talking a little bit about blockchain and the whole Dogecoin thing for the last few episodes. And I came to a realization that I'm pretty sure that Lynch hates the environment. And what does that mean? That a bunch of Lynch's hobbies are actually really bad for the environment and he just doesn't seem to care. Do you know how bad cryptocurrency is for the environment? How is that bad? It's real bad. I had no idea about this. I ended up going down this wormhole of trying to figure it out. So this is, uh, I'm just going to read this excerpt from a. From a, an article about it. It okay. was in the New Yorker. It says, according to the Cambridge Bitcoin Electricity Consumption Index. That's a thing. That's a thing. Okay. Uh, right. Bitcoin mining operations worldwide now use energy at the rate of nearly 120 terawatt hours per year. This is about the annual domestic electricity consumption of the entire nation of Sweden. Yeah, they're small. No, <laughs> that's a lot of electricity. 
That's bad that's for real? the environment. That's for real? Yeah, yeah. It gets worse. So here's like a uh, more like, so according to the, the uh, a single Bitcoin transaction uses the same amount of power that the average American household consumes in a month and is responsible for roughly a million times more carbon emissions than one single visa transaction. So really, yeah, you want to pay for something on your visa that uh, is good for the environment. You want to pay for something with one Bitcoin a million times worse wow. carbon emissions wise and electricity use wise. So Lynch doesn't care about the earth. No. Lynch is 80. He's like, I'm dead. I don't have children. Fuck it. He, uh, you know, I'm not concerned about the future. I got to live in it. OK, <laughs> I'm going to have to live through this. You last time you were talking about me standing up at your funeral talking about that. Right. But, but so all- which implies that I'm still alive and you're dead. Yeah, but <laughs> I might die young. I might die young. I thought I was going to make it to the 27 club. Wasn't cool enough. Here we are almost 30. Um, but I, I didn't realize it was that much electricity. Yeah, it's really bad. Like See, it, that's. I, that's why you don't touch your thermostat. I saw people arguing about it on Twitter. I saw someone tweeting out about how like, oh, like I got Dogecoin. Can't wait. Uh, his name's Turner. Shout out to Turner on air. That was the name. Uh, he uh, he said uh, that he was excited for Elon Musk to be on SNL because his Dogecoin is going to go up. And then I just saw someone respond with like, do you know how bad that is for the environment? And I was like, how the hell is it bad for the environment? So then I went and did a bunch of research. And it's like, it's not just this one article. And the New Yorker is fairly legitimate. Um, but there's lots like it's it's really bad electricity wise, which makes sense. I had we no talked idea. about the blockchain and you have all these like personal computers running all the time, monitoring the whole system constantly. It's a lot I, of electricity. I guess that makes sense, but I don't care if I, <laughs> I really I don't. I really because he's don't gonna care. die. <laughs> I had no idea about that, but all right, cool. I guess. Lynch hates There's the There's a lot of people out there who obviously don't care. Lynch hates the environment. Let's just, if you want to be on I Team recycle. Tyler. No, if you want to be on Team Tyler, Lynch hates the environment. He doesn't care about the world. Um, he doesn't care about the future of our planet. Lynch hates dogs. I drive dogs. a small, compact vehicle, Lynch which doesn't hates take dogs. a lot of gas. Tyler, although, he drives a truck. Okay, fair. I do drive a pickup truck. See? But Worse for the environment. How often do you drive? Because I have to come pick you up all the time. <laughs> Because I haven't driven. <laughs> I've driven once this year. It's pointless for me to have a vehicle. I never drive. I've driven once this entire year. We're almost at June. But your excuse for not driving is somebody broke into my truck and I haven't fixed it yet. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's the current situation. The window is smashed. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, and I do need to get it fixed. But even before that, I... You, yeah, you barely drove. Yeah, I live still. in an area where I can walk to everything. And then yeah. I keep my pickup truck for camping. Uh, and all my camping supplies. And I like to be able to get out of the city. Uh, and if, uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't have much excuse. I just like it. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, world, that I enjoy cryptocurrency. It's fine. And You're, it's I'm not the only the thing world, that you do. It's not the only thing that you do that is uh, bad for the environment. Uh, what, what is this? A shit on Lynch because he hates the environment? <laughs> yeah, I like well, the environment. I'm just I'm sure, recycling's not enough. Okay, do more. We got this message, uh, a voice memo, thank you, from Sarah into TylerLynch at gmail.com. Please feel free to send us voice memos at any point. Uh, But she has some great points about your death plan. Hi, fellas and Alexi. Um, I was just listening to your episode where you were talking about um, your death plans. uh, And I thought I would send you a little message. So, Lynch, I'm really disturbed by your plans of being put into fireworks cremated and put into fireworks um because that's really gross like think about all the poor people uh underneath you that will be hit by your falling ashes Showered. what's wrong with you <laughs> so i thought i would share um some other options that are also better for the environment uh i don't know why i've been <laughs> oh researching God. this a lot lately but cremation is really bad for the environment so some other things that you could do, you can like have yourself wrapped in, or your dead body, um, your corpse wrapped in a mushroom suit and buried. Oh. And like mushrooms are decomposers, so they will quickly decompose your body. Or, and this is the one that I want to do, there's an Italian design company who came up with this biodegradable pod <gasps> that they put your body into, like they, you're put in there in fetal position with a bunch of plant food. Um, and you are buried under a tree sapling 
So basically, like, you decompose and you go on to feed to this tree. So it's like you become the tree. Um, or this other option. Pretty great. And this is what I was thinking of for Lynch. <laughs> you can have your body composted. And it takes a few weeks. And then your family is given the, um, like, the rich soil from the compost. Uh, so I was thinking, if you want to do something snazzy but isn't gross, like turning yourself into a firework. Disgusting. You can have a whole bunch of flowers planted in your soil. <laughs> Um, and I know how much you like the Edmonton Oilers, so you could have like the Edmonton Oilers logo made out of different flowers <laughs> and your soil. So there you go. There are some better um, death plans for you. <laughs> so dark. Uh, keep up the good work, boys. I hope that you get employed <laughs> soon. Um, and yeah, see ya. Bye, Sarah. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> did you realize how bad your death plan was for the environment? Hey, no, wait, wait, because wait, wait, you wait, don't wait. consider anybody but yourself. Time out for a moment. You want to get cremated too. Yeah, but not shot into the sky and fireworks and like rain it. down on Nobody everybody. many people were like, oh, yeah, that's a great idea. I want to do that. Oliver actually messaged in on a YouTube comment and mentioned that there's a company that already does this. Does what? The fireworks with your ashes. It's not even an original thought, so it's bad really? for the environment and you didn't even come up with it. There's a company, there's a the company that does that already? It's called Heavy HeavenlyStarFireworks.com. Uh, and uh, I just took the, the description from the website. Okay. It says, At Heavenly Stars, we offer a variety of services for scattering ashes of your loved one or friend by incorporating their cremation ash into fireworks. Sending them off in style by providing a firework spectacular to remember them by with either one of our stunning self-fired firework tributes or one of our amazing professional fired firework displays. Awesome. I didn't yeah, even so know that. Not even an original thought. You could just hire this company to do this for you. Uh, you don't have to get your loved ones uh, in some like pyrotechnics garage putting your ashes <laughs> into fireworks tubes. Like, oh, we're going to take this Roman camel and. But that sounds more you're fun. Gonna have, you're you know? going to get your family members to blow their hands off trying to make you into fireworks. So you can do the Heavenly Star fireworks, but bad for the environment. I was reading about this cremation thing because, yeah, admittedly, I said I wanted to be cremated too. But it says cremations burn much natural gas at a temperature of 750 to 800 degrees, which must be maintained for 45 to 90 minutes, releasing greenhouse gases and vaporizing other chemicals that may be present in the body, such as mercury, a.k.a. dental fillings, and dioxins and furons. Emission of vaporized toxic mercury into the air is worrying. Uh, so cremation, bad for you. You know, what? Also, standard burials, pretty bad for you as well. That's why she's suggesting the... If you want to be environmentally friendly when you die, the mushroom suit, which sounds, <laughs> I'm into the mushroom suit So what suit about idea. the mushrooms that you've eaten? Or growing a tree. The tree the, thing is pretty cool. Yeah, like the they, tree thing's all right. Yeah, and then that tree lives on for, you know, hundreds of years. Like, that's way cooler than a gravestone. What's a gravestone? Just a rock on the ground? Stupid. Stupid. What are you, made of magnesium? And what are you, you think, a mineral? Why do you need that? It has no, nothing to do with you. Be a tree. And you think, like, the tree, when it's growing, maybe it'll grab, like, your teeth, Ooh. and it'll be, like, embedded in the bark or something like that. Ooh. No, that won't happen. That's the dumbest. You never know. You We're, never know. No. You, you see these trees that are like wrapped around benches. The benches are like growing inside of it or like the bike. You're decomposed underneath the yeah, tree. but still, <laughs> there's a chance. There's a chance. Don't ever rule anything out. Uh, thank you to Oliver for letting us know about Heavenly Star Fire. I didn't even know thank about you that. To That's Sarah. cool. The mushroom suit's an interesting one. What about if we took you, Kay. gave you a mushroom suit, right? Okay. Then we uh, went to the grocery store. So like we got what, a, we in, got a, a, in a mushroom suit, do they like, is it like a suit suit? That's made of mushrooms that they put on you? I guess so. Okay. So here's my thought. We take you, we get you in a mushroom suit, right? We, we get a nice gravy, pour that over top. <laughs> a nice we go to the, gravy. We go to the grocery store. We get a, a puff pastry, a tender flake, a bunch of them. We wrap you. We throw you in the oven for like an hour, 350. You come out Lynch Wellington. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. You went weird and dark on that one. Why? Lynch Wellington. <laughs> You're like, and we don't eat uh, you. Mm, we just like bury you like that so that you decompose faster. <laughs> huh? That just sounds like a waste of meat and stuff. Turning into the garden thing's nice. Yeah, I guess. It's kind of boring. Fireworks. Fireworks <laughs> is the where it's at. No. No, it's it, everybody can enjoy it. It's fun. You do the garden, right? You plant flowers. Then every Mother's Day, your mom can remember you by going and picking flowers for herself on Mother's <laughs> oh Day. Oh, my there. God. It was just Mother's Day. I'm just thinking of nice ideas. Did you get your mom flowers? No, good. Of course not. No, I bought her something online. Yeah, not flowers. You know what? She would have loved flowers. Maybe you got to die and then she'll have flowers. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you go pick flowers. I think, my I think Barb will be into this idea. Well, yeah, I don't know. Maybe we ask her. Yeah. 
But so you got, what'd you get your mom for Mother's Day? Uh, I, I haven't seen my mom in like two years. Yeah. Pandemic and sucks. So I got her a, uh, a gift card for uh, WestJet. So oh, that's nice. So, so when, when they can, people can actually do things again. Right. Yeah. How about you? Nothing. You didn't uh, get your mom anything? We've talked about this on before. Come on, it's your mom. It, we don't. Throw, throw your idea of not getting gifts out the window. It's, it's your not, mom. It's not my idea. It's my fa My family doesn't buy birthday gifts for each other, Mother's Day gifts, Christmas gifts, nothing. There's no gift giving in our household. So uh, I uh, I texted her. <laughs> you didn't even call her? Uh, and uh, I... Let's just, uh, this came out on Monday. We record on Sundays. It is Mother's Day. There's a time difference. I haven't had the chance to call her yet. It's very early. I will call her after the show. Also, she's watching this. I have to do a video for a, an upcoming thing. And my mom likes to make fun of my fashion a lot. My mom is definitely Team Lynch, not Team Tyler. Nice. And uh, she said, just remember Thanks, to put Denise. your eye serum on so you look better than you did in the last episode. <laughs> so going yeah, back she's to getting Brett's a call. Comments. She's getting a call. Uh, we did go out with my, uh, not out, but we went and hung out in the backyard safely uh, with uh, my my girlfriend's mom yesterday for Mother's Day. And that was nice. We did like, they do gifts. There's like big brunch and flowers and we brought all that. And it was a good time. That's good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, nothing for, nothing for so, old Denise. So are you changing your plans episode. on, on your, your deathbed? <laughs> what do you mean? Like, are you changing your idea of getting cremated? Oh, I think I want to do the dirt and like let something grow out of me thing. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Especially a tree. I really like the tree idea. It lives forever. The tree idea Not is forever, a, is but a good a idea, long but time. Still and then one day works. someone will cut it down and turn it into paper. And then someone will write the formula to cure AIDS on that paper. And that will be my contribution to the world. <laughs> So actually, the recipe so to cure I, AIDS I is on AIDS. Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> That's my plan. Um, Elon Musk. So the Dogecoin thing was bad. Yeah. I didn't actually watch the episode, though. And it's so interesting because there's so much controversy about this Elon Musk hosting thing, which seemed ridiculous. As I mentioned in the last episode, I think it was more political because he kind of like, it wasn't a COVID denier, but he really downplayed COVID at the beginning and throughout the whole thing. Yeah. I, I believe. Um but I think it's probably pretty smart on their part because I would imagine it's the most watched episode of the season. I would because think of the so. controversy. Uh, you actually watched it. Was it good? Is Not my question. at all. Okay, it was horrible. Yeah, like there's a reason why Elon Musk does what he does. Um, He's not a comedian by any means no. and should not be hosting things like SNL. Yeah, he's very socially weird. Yeah, he well, he even said that in uh, his monologue. Uh, he's got, uh, he admitted that he has Asperger's. Oh, well, that's, the sky is also blue. We all knew that. It makes sense, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like if you ever listen to him talk at all, he, that checks out. He is socially awkward. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which and also like genius, checked. which also goes to the amount of people with Asperger's who are like <laughs> so much more intelligent than the rest of the planet. And that all checks out. Yeah. Um, I remember listening to him on a podcast. It was the Rogan episode where he smoked weed. I was like, I got to hear this. He talks so slow and so... I thought it was really thoughtful at the beginning, like one of those people that just really pauses and thinks about what they're going to say. But I don't think it is. I think he's just weird. Uh, but in that episode, he was like, you don't want to be me. Like he was, it was like pretty dark. He was like, he's like, just the way his brain works. He's, he's like, it's constantly going and it's a lot. And you're like, oh, that's dark. He seems like, he's that like guy. you don't want my brain. And you're like, well, yeah, no, I'm good with being dumb. Ignorance <laughs> is bliss sometimes. I'm <laughs> glad I don't understand how Mars and rockets work. <laughs> It's got to be stressful. <laughs> I, I don't think that uh, he gets a full night's sleep ever, ever because he's always got something going on. Right. He's always thinking about different things. I have that same problem, but with the dumbest thoughts in the world. Yeah. He's making yeah, brilliant yeah, yeah. decisions yeah. with his money and <laughs> yeah, his yeah. thoughts <laughs> where Tyler's just like not even close. Yeah, yeah. Mine was, what was my last Google search in the last episode? Like our drafts horses. That's what keeps me up at night. <laughs> I'll think about that for hours. <laughs> So not a good episode. No, no, yeah. not poor, at all. Poor Elon. Yeah, it uh, it was it was weird, man, because he even brought his wife or is it uh, Grimes? Is Grimes, girlfriend? yeah. And uh, yeah, he had Grimes on there. He had his mom, who I didn't know. His mom's Canadian. Mm. Oh, um, I didn't know that. Yeah, so she was on there as well, of course, for the Mother's Day special. But um, and at the end, he kind of admitted that uh, it's wrong and you should be wearing a mask, kind of well, going against all the. The stuff which I, I would imagine pissed off the, the cast members as to why he was on there. Right. Yeah. I can't remember exactly what he said. So this is going to be real like armchair opinion. But 
It was something along the line. It had to do with allowing people to work at the beginning. Like it was some sort of argument about like uh, the detriment of like completely locking down and not allowing people to work at all. And him wanting to allow his like Tesla employees to work. But then they had like an outbreak and he got COVID. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, like I think he learned his lesson. Like anyways, let's not talk about yeah, that. He, like, he's, he's he's COVID guy. sucks. We got the pandemic report coming up in a little bit where we can talk about a dumb COVID story. Sick of talking about it. It sucks. It's the worst. It does. Yeah. Um, his mom is Canadian. Though. Yeah. He strikes me as the type of guy who would start something like Scientology. Right. <laughs> Like, doesn't Elon Musk seem like he would start a sci-fi church? 100%. That's like, I'm amazed that he's not already a Scientologist. Like, like him and Beck and Tom Cruise. Right. Beck, Beck's dad, also Canadian. I know. Also a Scientologist. So there you go. Crazy. Don't trust him. <laughs> Speaking of not trusting things. I found this clip. It was on just on Barstool of this dad uh who is uh he can't remember his mastercard online banking password and he's going through on the computer and trying to uh get back in answering all those like security questions first off you can't see it in the, the video but the font is this big like like, like oh, it's so oh, zoomed it's in massive. and his dad's like like right up here like this is like staring at it uh and it's massive and the son's just filming it and he just can't <laughs> of course What's my fucking pet's name? I'll tell you my fucking pet's name. And if it's not the right one, I'm gonna call you all and cancel my fucking MasterCard. <laughs> yeah, that's not the one either. But now, which one did I try before? <laughs> <laughs> How many pets has he had? I don't know. <laughs> But <laughs> those questions, do you ever get one of your security questions on your online stuff and you're like, I... I don't know. Like, yeah. like, what's the street you grew up on name? So it's like, well, my parents flipped houses and we moved every year. So I have no idea how to answer this question. And now when it comes up, I'm like, I don't know what street. This was 10 streets I grew up on. But yeah, okay? three chances. It's, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, <laughs> give me the robot button click thing. Okay, that's easy. Really? The, those questions can be difficult. But it also reminded me of a thing that I like to tell people because I don't think enough people know about this. And I think it's important. There's a real, a real honest message for me. You know those memes that go around? Uh, Lynch, you know what a meme is, right? Like yeah, I know older. what a meme is. Okay. Um, and Alexa, you probably see these where it's like, what's your superhero name? And yeah. it's like, your your mother's maiden name and uh, y y your first car. Or, you know, like y y your the street you grew up on and your pet's name starts with this letter. And then you add it up and you're like, oh, I'm whatever. I'm Ant Bucket Man or Whatever. Yeah, I get Super you. Hero, yeah, yeah. There's the stripper ones yeah. or like your rap name or all that kind of stuff. Hackers have like developed a lot of those memes because they're the same questions that are your security mm. questions. So they'll put them out there and then you go into the secure into the comment section. You're like, oh, my name's Chairface. And they're like, <laughs> oh, Chairface. And they go, okay, so the mother's maiden name starts with this and this. And then they have. Uh, some answers to your security questions online. And it's been proven that a lot of those memes that go around are developed by hackers. Not all of them. A lot of them are just, you know, it's a popular trend and people are like, oh, I came up with a good one to make it or whatever. Uh, so you don't need to like freak out about it, but like maybe don't answer those in the comment section. That's my my lesson so here. How? Because when you told me about this, I didn't yeah. even think about that stuff. How did you actually come across that like algorithm of them finding out passwords? How did I cr come across like, that? How like you just didn't figure that part out on your on your own, did you? No, I saw a tweet about it. Who were uh, where, so, um, it was just like some web security person tweeting out about how yeah, like don't answer these publicly, like with one of the popular ones going around, be, uh, because these are just your security questions for your online banking, your credit, and all this kind of stuff. Um, so then I kind of went down a wormhole of that guy's. I can't remember his name. This was years ago, but that guy's like specific blog uh, where he just explained detailed cases of where they've investigated and found out that a lot of these come from like pretty sketchy, like meme organizations. You'd be amazed how much, uh, and I'm a bit of a conspiracy theorist. So oh, yeah. yes, I buy <laughs> into bit, these things, come on. <laughs> but you'd be amazed with how many people, um, or how much, uh, how many governments are involved with making memes for real. Yeah. Yeah. Like Russia has a whole organization, uh, where basically they, they try and like, 
sow discord and like try and get people arguing in America via meme pages. So they'll start like a Facebook group and it'll be like memes about being a mom or whatever. And then they have whole like organizations writing these memes. And some of them are like, they're really funny. They're good. And these pages gain a million followers. And then uh, after it's got like a million followers, they'll switch the name to like, whatever, like Trump for life or something and, 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 and like something opposite of what it was. And then they'll start posting a bunch of memes about that. And then all those people who signed up for the mom memes now have this like pro Trump stuff or whatever it is in their timeline. And then they're like, what the fuck? And they get in the comments and they argue about that. Um, and they do it on purpose just to like get people arguing. Really? Or they'll like organize, there's cases where they organized events, like especially during the last election cycle where it was like they'll organize like a, like a Black Lives Matter protest. They'll start a Facebook group on like one side of the street. And then like same day, They'll start like a, a like an Antifa. This is extreme example, but like an Antifa protest on like the other side of the street on the same day. And they'll launch both of those pages so that they start at the same time. So that way there's this, you know, then like all this news coverage of, of these people fighting. And yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, well, that's they do all that kind of stuff. It's pretty crazy. And it's not like for all everyone. I understand I'm not a national security expert. OK, so these could be like loose examples. But it's not like far-fetched conspiracy. Like there's a lot of that kind of stuff going on. And I'm sure like our government does it. I'm sure they all do it. Like uh, these internet organizations are huge. That's fascinating. Yeah. Wow. It's pretty scary, actually. They uh, should do like a Netflix show that's why or I'm, something like that. They did. There's like 9 million documentaries about that. <laughs> On Netflix? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> There's so many. Where do you think I got this information? You think I would <laughs> think I'd sign up for a university to learn this? No, I watched it on the internet. There's tons of it. Uh, YouTube is, has some less trustworthy ones, but they're more interesting. And then there's lots of great ones on Netflix. Uh -huh. um, there was the one about the whole uh, Cambridge Analytica situation, which uh, that like whistleblower, uh, that was like an organization that Trump used to help like gain popularity in like the 2016 election online. Uh, and like that whole story is crazy. That documentary is great. And like that company, that whistleblower, he's Canadian. He was from Victoria and he moved to the UK to do it over there. But they had like a branch in Victoria. Whoa. Um, and like the Trudeau government apparently used that in their election too. And it's not a crime. They weren't doing anything legal. They're just like internet marketing companies basically that are really, really good and have like wow. a crazy data list. Because of some like Facebook fuck up back in the day. That is, yeah. that's so just, that's so interesting. Half the time when I talk about this stuff, I'm like, I, I just sound, I, I, do, I don't know what I'm talking about. I just like, <laughs> like, 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 this is really like, don't, don't go running around telling people that like you're a hundred percent accurate. If you're at all interested, go do your own research and make your own decisions. Okay. I'm not here to tell you anything. Let's move on. Still <laughs> something stupid. Still, Stop I'll answering the memes. That's all I'm saying. Don't trust memes. Stop answering them. <laughs> That's it, okay? Don't trust the internet. <laughs> God. Oh, I get sweaty when I talk I, about that I stuff because I get nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do something dumb. This is dumb. Let's go to Brian Fantano live on, on the scene with a Channel 4 News exclusive. Brian? Pandemic Watch. Time for the Pandemic Watch where we take a look at some of the dumb coronavirus stories going around because those are fun to laugh at. You sent me one yesterday yep. that I think is fascinating. It reads, scientists in the Netherlands said that they have trained bees to sniff out COVID-19, which will help the wait time for test results. The bees are trained to sniff out the disease, and if they do, they are then rewarded with sugar water. Oh. So they have bees sniffing out COVID. And I was reading a little bit more of, like, the article. Um, and I, I guess bees have really good sense of smell, um, which makes sense. Yeah. They I guess they're sniffing sniff out pollen. Sniff the flowers and right? pollen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> They put harnesses on the bees, which that's in the article, and that stuck out to me because I'm like, how do you get a harness on a bee? They're you're so just, like, small. Using tweezers, like you're just like, here's your little jacket. <laughs> um, and then uh, yeah, they they trained them with like a, a COVID nineteen sample uh, where someone was infected, and they had them sniff it out, and they found that they could identify the two different ones. Uh, and now they know that the, it's kind of like the Pavlo's dog theory or whatever. Now they know that if they sniff out COVID, they'll get sugar water. So they're sniffing it out and it's like instant results. And then they're shockingly accurate. Which is amazing. Yeah, eh? yeah. But like if you're not feeling well, right? And you're like, I think I might have COVID. So you're going to go to the drive-in test site, which we've talked about already. is like an apocalypse center. It's like a tent with a bunch of hazmat suits. It's creepy. It's weirdly lit. It's awkward. 
So you go in there and then they're like, okay, now we're going to just like put bees all over you. Like, like you're just going into a tent and like getting covered with bees. Release the bees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all I can think of is that Nicolas Cage meme where he's got like the, I forget what movie that is. He's got the, the cage over his head and they fill it with bees as torture. I'm like, that's what I'm picturing. <laughs> Do they have them on little leashes? And like, what so if they the can get them back? On little leashes. <laughs> like, <laughs> really? All right, Fred. <laughs> now that's your, your turn to go and find the, the COVID. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's so cute. <laughs> be on a leash. <laughs> like, really? How do you harness those boys back in? I don't know. It's another example. Bees really had a glow up over the last couple of years. No one else, no one ever talked about bees. And then like within the last five years, we're like, bees are really important. And now there's, everyone loves bees. Yeah, now. save the bees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like bee farms on everything. And like, you go to like, I, there's a uh, Fairmont hotel here where I, I forget which one. There's like five of them. Uh, but the one has like a rooftop bee garden if you go to it. And it's oh. like. There's so many bees. It's like, zzz, like when you're up there, like you can't even hang out. It's not relaxing by any means, but they're just doing their part to protect the bees. Everybody's protecting the bees. We need to. Yeah. We have the damn murder hornets that are killing the bees. Yes. Mm. And then murder hornet seasons probably hornets come up are here just soon. dick bees. They are. Okay? They're yeah, asshole yeah. Bees. Hornets suck. We don't need hornets. We can get rid of hornets. Hornets are just assholes. They're asshole bees. Honey bees, though, they don't sting you, right? Uh, well, if they sting you, they die. So they won't? So they don't want to sting you. Mm -hmm. Right. But if you irritate them enough? I guess so. If you give them COVID, they might be a little pissed. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. 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 They'll be like, oh, great. This, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not like with wasps. They could just sting and sting and sting and sting. That's, that's why they're assholes. Uh, that's the worst. Wa Let's get rid of wasps. How do, we, how do we call the wasps from the world? We're going to get some message about how wasps are important <laughs> yeah, and how we're affecting right? the wasp population and how Lynch, Lynch does hate the environment. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hate wasps. Yeah, yeah. People are so offended. It's true. It's true. <laughs> I hate to be, I hate to be the, uh, the straight white male who's about to tell you how it is, but <laughs> oh, I'm getting sick of all this people being offended by everything. Okay. It's getting a little out of control. Here's an example. My girlfriend does videos for, we better not name it, a college. Okay. And she does like social media videos. And they originally hired her because she did this kind of like Instagram reel video on her own thing that was like springtime. And then she, she uses like After Effects, like it's like more of an, like an animation thing. And these like flowers are popping up around her. And then she like sniffs them. And then she sneezes because she has incredible, she's allergic to everything. I'm <laughs> amazed. She's live. Um, <laughs> it's shocking. <laughs> So she can see, yeah, <laughs> three-year-old EpiPen that has expired. She carries around. I'm like, is that even going to work if I have to stab you to keep you alive? Like, um, <laughs> so she did that. They liked it. And then they're like, can you recreate that with like the college logo on it? Like happy like spring study session or whatever. But then they specifically noted, they're like, but can you not sneeze at the end? Because we don't want to offend people with allergies. Uh really? Yeah. So she wasn't allowed to sneeze in it because they were worried about offending people with allergies. Now... <laughs> I have okay. allergies in the spring. I have allergies too. <laughs> yeah, like, and she does. That was the whole point of the video. So basically they're like, you would be offended by your own allergies. It's like, it's dictating to her what she's supposed to be or could be offended about as someone who doesn't have the same issue. I was like, this is so dumb. We can't sneeze now. Sneezing is offensive. Sneezing. Well, I, I would have and this thought isn't it was like, a different reason This isn't why. like a, a legit... It is legit, but this is one of those like adult colleges. This is a college for people that got DUIs and want to get their life back together. This isn't like, you know, like this isn't UBC. Okay. And I'm like, <laughs> like offend by allergies. What are you talking about? Like half your people went to jail already. Like, like <laughs> I would be thinking like, okay, don't do the sneezing thing because we don't want people thinking that you have COVID. Right. Yeah. Like that would have been in my head. No. Not, not, no, allergies. People are getting offended by allergies. Offended by everything. Allergies. The oh latest my offender. Lord. Oh, I want to no. offend those groups. It's like, and I guess there's some like parents that like get pretty offended about like peanut stuff. And if you make jokes about peanuts because their kids have severe peanut allergies, and it's like, I get it. When I was like, I, I the whole thing of like, oh, when I was a kid, I could eat peanut butter at school, whatever I wanted. I mean, things change, okay? Now it kills people, okay? Like, we're not <laughs> trying to kill kids. I get that you shouldn't bring it to school, but it's like, if you make a joke about it, it's like, what? A, what, a, what? I feel yeah. bad for those kids, man. I've been working on this stand-up bit for a little while about how, like, because my girlfriend has a severe nut allergy, like, touches the mouth, rush, like, the oil, like, rush to the hospital, 
could die immediately type allergy. Is hers oh as God. bad as where it's like peanut dust in the air? No. So she can't get it that way, which is nice. I could, I still eat peanut butter around her all the time, but like have to be very careful. Like I had, I have a specific knife for peanut butter. The peanut butter goes in a very specific place in the house uh, and doesn't like come in contact with anything else because just like a little bit, but she notices like immediately, like if it just like touches her lip, even like her mouth will start to swell immediately. Oh, like, it's like that quick in like that small of an amount um, does it so she can like, so she catches it right away. Like you can like EpiPen and get to the hospital quick. Um, but I was working on the stand up bit about how like dating a girl with peanut allergies is like uh, great. Uh, it's because great. You, you just like always have an easy out. Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> and then you just you like, you just like carry around like that little bag of peanuts crushed up from McDonald's. Like it goes on the, the Sundays and you just like shake it. You're like, Hey, Hey. <laughs> um, but it's probably a little dark. It's a, it's about murder. So yeah, yeah it's, a work. it's not really a bit yet. It was just a thought. <laughs> uh, and uh, what keeps you awake at yeah. night? She thinks it's funny, but uh, I don't know if anyone else. Does she will. think it's funny or is it like, <laughs> <laughs> she thinks it's hilarious. <laughs> it's one of those things where, yeah, uh, she understands the context, you know, context is so important and it's allowed in that sense. Like, <laughs> Trying to make like, like jokes about being like, which feels so weird and so like woke to say and just stupid, but like we're an interracial couple, you know, like, <laughs> like we are and like trying to find like ways to joke about that. That's not, it's like none of it offends her, but like, I know that if I say it wrong to an audience, it's going to offend them and they're going to be offended for her. And it's like, <laughs> she fucking wrote the joke. Okay? <laughs> like, like She's telling me what to say. Like, like, like She wrote one about how like we went to the Lunar New Year like parade in Chinatown here and like how just walk into the crowd and like immediately I was just like, Jess, Jess, like, <laughs> just turning people around. She's like, that's hilarious. I'm like, I can't say that. <laughs> like, like, yeah, people are going to be offended by that. I, anyway. Oh God. Um, let's wrap this up. I got to get out of here. Okay. We have, uh, as we said, promising things in the works. So uh, other stuff to get done today. Uh, but I know it's the day after Mother's Day, but happy Mother's Day to uh, all you moms out there. Moms are the best. Yeah. Uh, Call big, your mom, please. Big mama's boy. Yeah. If you're calling today, though, you're late. Yeah. You're and a you're, bit late. Yeah, yeah. Out of the will. Yeah. You and if up. you haven't sent a card yet. <laughs> I didn't. Blame it on Canada Post. <laughs> That's true. You can always blame it on. Blame it on the pandemic. Cards. Short. Everything. Short, short of cards. Everyone's sending cards because they can't see each other. There you go. Good excuse. Um, but just call it. Be nice to your mom. Moms are the best. We're both mama's boys. Yeah. <laughs> Love you, Barb. Yeah, yeah. Love you, Mom. I'll put my eye serum on. <laughs> <laughs> She's so mean sometimes. It's hard. Um, but it's uh, tough love. Yeah. Let's do our thank yous. Big thank you to uh, Jim Bob John for the music. A big thank you to Jessica Wong for all the graphics. That's my girlfriend. <laughs> um, big thank you to the Comedy Here Off at Podcast Network. Check out all the other shows on the network. Uh, there's so much listening to be done. So many talented people. So many uh, really funny comedians and just adding more and more shows to the network. So uh, jump on board and check out some of the other shows when you're Very done listening funny. to us. Uh, make sure you rate, review, subscribe uh, on iTunes, Spotify, Google, Stitcher. There's 9 million places to listen to podcasts. I don't even know the other ones. Uh, and then on YouTube specifically, like like and comment, that really helps on there. Uh, and you can watch the whole show on there if you're just listening. And, uh, you know, there's sometimes some good visual stuff. Like if you wanted to hear Lynch choke on the neti pot. <laughs> That video. Yeah, up my there. mom mentioned yeah, yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was a bunch of comments that were like, I had I was just listening and I had to come watch this. <laughs> yeah. And a lot who were like, You're such a pussy about it. So like, like, <laughs> it's not that bad. It's hard to do, People it, do it all down. the time. When you're standing up, it's a lot easier. We were talking about it, uh, like texting Alexi and I about how like that's been around for centuries. Like yeah. it's not like it's some like new technology. <laughs> ah, ah. It's like they were doing that like when they still used mercury as medicine and they were fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, big thank you to producer Alexi for doing this as thank always you. we appreciate you being here uh, and of, uh, of course send us an email tylerlynch at gmail.com and thank you for listening and uh, Chad uh, next episode guest we hopefully have a guest pretty sure yep uh, so that's going to be a fun one uh, but uh, no Chad Kroger yet so no not Chad we'll line that up our people will get to his people and, and we don't have people. or he'll be here and like he'll yeah. just get over that whole 15 year old grudge that he's rich and should forget about soon uh so uh <laughs> just poke the bear jack kroger we'll see you soon 